Okay. Let's give this a shot. See how it goes. So, like, like I said before, I like the idea behind this. It doesn't really work for the Let's Play because we didn't want to go through the whole game again for a bonus game. But, um, like, in general, I like this concept of uh, doing a full playthrough and then you have this extra mode, but the extra mode is too hard unless you do the new game plus and in the new game plus there's like more stuff to get and more levels to get and you want to get better rankings so you get more xp so you end up with a higher level in the end like i really like this concept i don't know how much fun it's going to be to do because this game in general the gameplay was already getting stale <laughs> uh by the end of the regular game so I don't know how much I really want to play through the entire game again, even not talking about the Let's Play. But, uh... I at least like the concept. Like I said, I I'm, I'm kind of surprised at how much thought they put into the post-game of a game that, really, I didn't expect any post-game. I expected this to just be a, a fun little action game distraction from you know like it feels like they released this as kind of just uh here's another Final Fantasy 7 thing just a little distract fun little distraction with Vincent not really something they expect you to play for super long so yeah, I'm just, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the amount of thought they put into it. But I think that this idea of a really difficult post-game falters a bit just because the game itself gets a bit stale already with its lack of enemy design and just the gameplay in general. Just doesn't really, it, it doesn't feel like the type of game that as soon as I beat it, I want to beat it again, you know? Like Devil May Cry or something, you know? You get to the end of the game, and there's a reason there's like nine different difficulties and nine different New Game Pluses. Because when you get to uh, the end of Devil May Cry, you want to play more Devil May Cry, you know? But with this game, it's like, yeah, one playthrough's kind of enough. Like, <laughs> you know, we saw the story, we understood the mechanics. Not really something we want to jump right back into. At least for me. Yeah, obviously when you're a kid it's a bit different, because a lot of times you only have the one game to play, and so playing through again would be something you'd want to do anyways. And in that case, this would be really cool to get to keep your stuff and, and play more, you know? gonna die a horrible death. Oh, they're probably up here, aren't they? Yeah. <coughs> Feels good to have ammo again. Yeah, so how does the ultimate weapon work? You said there's like a hidden weapon you have to get. What chapter is that in? I'm also very happy you can skip the cutscenes. That's not something you can do in a lot of PS2 games, especially Square Enix PS2 games. But I think they realized that uh, this is an action game and people are going to want to skip those cutscenes on a repeat playthrough. I'm impressed with the amount of like just small things that they got right in this game. Because this was Square's first game like this. I don't think it was their first action game, was it? But it was certainly their first, like, third-person shooter-style game. Although they had, um... They had, uh... What you, what you call it? Um... The game with the weird name. Which I think is a third person shooter.
But yeah, a lot of the little stuff, a lot of the little stuff they got right in this. I just wish that the overall gameplay was more varied. Tried playing Dirge a few years out back, and after finding my copy, and la it lasted all five minutes before it went back into storage. Yikes! It, it definitely doesn't start off. It gets better. Like I would say that. Well, there's that annoying chapter with the kid. But I think uh, like mid-game, the game definitely hits its stride, and then. Shortly after, starts to go downhill. <laughs> and then it's just cutscene after cutscene after cutscene. Cutscene, shoot some stuff, cutscene, shoot some stuff. For the whole rest of the game. But that, like... I don't even know if, like, middle game is accurate, but... After the first couple chapters, you have like a few chapters where you're constantly getting new guns. The story's getting interesting. There's a couple like boss battles, which the boss battles suck, but at least it's something different. <laughs> I would say that's probably the best part of the game. This whole like city trying to figure out who's shooting you. And the first time you go through, you only have this one gun for this. It's not the best. Don't know. Yes, is calm. Now where do I restart from? Calculating points. Oh, you get XP when you fail? Hmm. That's interesting. So wait. Now I'm really confused. Could could we have just played earlier, like the last mission over and over again, maybe, to level up? Instead of resetting our level? Also, look at our HP, what the heck? Now I'm starting to wonder if maybe your level is just set in those missions too. It's really just all about the equipment. <laughs> this would have to start all the way at the start. Well, this isn't too bad. If you lose, you go up a level and try again. miss one guy and then he just deletes my health bar.
Hello there. I mean, if you master Knights of the Round, Master Summon is pretty close at that point. Knights of the Round takes an ungodly amount of time to master versus all the others. You can master all the others in the time it takes to master like half a Knights of the Round. I do have a limit breaker I could use if I really wanted to. Can't even see this guy. Stop. I gotta level up my machine gun, it's so terrible. I think that's next on the to do list. <laughs> level up the machine gun. They don't use it as much, but it's so bad. If the machine gun is actually strong, it would help with the the boss in the labyrinth. Because it has pretty good ammo. I don't know where this guy is. Oh, I see. He's like around the corner, but he, he can hit me, but I can't hit him. Phoenix down. Run, little girl, run! Or don't. Cape flip, Vincent. Very epic. Alright. Now we got some items. We should be doing good. Got 
the co constant cutscenes are even worse when I'm skipping them. Should I explore more or should I? Somebody help! Somebody help. <laughs> Holy cow, that damage. I saved him. Yo, Browns! I'm still alive. My man. So happy to see you. I hope you've been well. Been a crazy few months. Tell us about it, man. Thank you very much for the 46 month primer, by the way. And yet, think of the give this up to Quantum. I posted the uh, the Ifrit duplication video. Someone commented and said, "Like, Psy deletes perfect save file and starts over." <laughs> I feel like every year the perfect Final Fantasy VII save file changes. Safe. I, I've never been, never been into that. As much of a completionist as I am, I've never been into perfect save files. I like seeing the number in game go up. You know, like if the game itself has a hundred percent, I like to get that. But or like trophies, I like to get that. But in terms of like subjective perfect files, I've never really been a big fan of that. I think maybe the only thing close that I've ever done to like a subjective perfect file is uh, back in the day when I did the Pikmin nine day challenge with no deaths. That was kind of like a perfect file in a way. Ow. Hey, what if you uh, like flew in here so I could shoot you? You did that. When are the machine going to be good for taking out the missiles? Yeah, long, long time ago. One of my first challenge runs I ever did on the channel. I did a Pikmin 9 day. <laughs> which is basically just beating Pikmin in the shortest amount of days possible. Which I think now is actually 8 days. I think it, uh, with a glitch, they found a way to do it quicker. But I did mine without any Pikmin dying, so like at the end of the game it shows nine days, zero deaths. Which is kind of like a, in a way, like a perfect file. Maybe not exactly, because you could also have like the amount of Pikmin you raise, but that's kind of infinite, so. That's, that's the only thing I can think of that comes close to like a perfect file in a general sense that I've done.
Well, that kind of worked. Wasn't perfect, but... Whoa, big damage. Giant CD in my face. <laughs> Alright, is this that part that everyone got stuck on? Including me, where the enemies just spawn forever? Exciting. That's awesome, dude. Just in time, we're near the end of Phantathon. Ow. Love that. Just instant damage the second the cutscene ends. Very nice. This is the Vincent DLC of Final Fantasy. Challenge accepted. Yeah, all right, this is that. This is that mission. Confused. Why wasn't there a million enemies like last time? Or is that at the end of this? Maybe it's at the end of this. Yeah, no, I think I'm thinking of the end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for rescuing me. Silver Moogle doll. I don't remember that from the... Ooh. Sell item. on the roofs. Back. You know what? Time for the classic. 
classic cheese. Yes, Punisher is busted. Like, actually busted. <laughs> if you know what you're doing. There's a couple busted things in Remake, but that's probably the most obvious and usable in the most amount of spots. Like for a casual playthrough, it's the best thing to know and take advantage of. Oh, okay, he dead. Let's see what we got. A C. Rip. Now, it might actually be smarter to give myself Gil if level doesn't matter, but I'll do XP for now. In case it does matter. All right, so we got sell that for five thousand. Yeah, I really didn't make much money. Not enough to really do anything. I can upgrade my machine gun to have better accuracy, improve fire rate, or bigger magazine i don't know if bigger magazine means more ammo overall or not hmm let's do power for now i guess Unless I want to level up, like, the normal barrel. Or the short barrel. Ooh, I could level up the Cerberus Relief. That might help. <laughs> Alright, so let's see what happens if I save and quit. Showdown in the wastes. I'll just temp save. The whole money can't buy you happiness thing is misconstrued a lot. People take it as like, you can't spend money to make yourself happy, which is not true. 
What it means is you can be rich and still unhappy. True happiness doesn't come just from money. That's what it's meant to mean. But people just take it as, well, I could buy a Lamborghini and that would make me happy. Like, yes, for the moment it would. The, the true sense of the term is there are many people in this world with a lot of money that are not happy because they spent too much on money, too much time on money, and now they don't have things like social interaction and personal happiness and many other things. That's what it's meant to mean. It's kind of a bad saying, to be honest, because it doesn't, it's hard to understand the true meaning behind it. In many ways, money buys a lot of happiness. Being out of debt makes you a lot more happy. Not having to worry about certain things makes you a lot more happy. You can buy things that make you happy. Like, there's a lot of happiness that comes with money. But the point of the saying is that there are many ways to be unhappy with a lot of money, and money isn't everything. That's what it's really supposed to mean. Okay, so... We're level three, so it looks like the mission itself sets your level. So level means nothing. Now, oh man, we don't have any. Oh, that's my material level. Okay, well still, my HP is back to 780. I don't have my stuff. I do not have my stuff that I just bought. So... I don't know how this works. <coughs> my guess is that we gotta play through the entire New Game Plus. And then that kind of unlocks the mission mode in New Game Plus. But then I wonder if the missions are harder or something. Probably not. No, it's not. I bought a powered up machine gun and it's not here. And I bought a powered up Cerberus Relief and it's not here. So I think it takes, it probably takes the information from like this save. Like whatever your final save is, it probably like takes that. So we gotta get extra hard mode all the way to the end. And then it'll take that information instead. Which is just really, Unless, like, my temp save screwed it up or something. Unless, like, because I temp saved, it didn't work or something. I don't know. Let's get through this and then, like, quit and then see what happens. Also going Spino. Is this game awful? No. Especially for the time. I think it was pretty good. It has a lot of issues, but it's not awful. It's very mid after like the mid the mid game. <laughs> like I'm I'm willing to say I, I'm willing to to defend this game. I, I honestly think it's very fun until the mid game. Until you get to like chapter seven or eight, I honestly think this game is is really fun. Like I I really enjoyed the beginning quite a bit. But, uh, it falls off. It falls off quite heavily. I'm excited for Rebirth. I'm not as much excited for a demo. The game is so close to coming out, I just want to play the game. 
but I will be excited to play a demo if it arrives. Again, the phrase is not meaning money does not make you happy. It does. The phrase means just because you have money doesn't automatically make you happy forever, and there's other things that contribute to happiness. You can't just say, if I had more money, I'd be happier. That, that's not the point of the saying. But again, it's a bad saying. <laughs> it's kind of, whoever came up with the saying, it's, it's not a good saying because it doesn't really accurately describe what they were going for. Okay, so. I now have my upgraded Cerberus Relief. My upgraded machine gun. I think I can load from that checkpoint, I think. Hopefully. Yeah. No. That's way later. Okay. Yeah, like here. So let's see. I kind of doubt it, but hey. She doesn't say anything, does she? I think she just explains. Let's go and try one. I love that Square flexed that it's on two discs. Just cracks me up. On two discs. Nope. So, yeah, I, I think that we just have... You, and I think it expects... Like I said, I think it expects you to play all the way through New Game Plus. So. That'll be that. But I'm glad we got to do some of them at least. You kind of get the idea of what these are. So I guess that's it. I guess that is it for our let's play. Um, we'll watch the uh, we'll watch the secret ending. Um, and again, like I I really think that this game went above and beyond for like the post game I'm really impressed someday we'll have to uh, and maybe I'll even just do it on my own time but I would like to run through the game again on new game plus and kind of see more of the extra missions just not for the let's play but maybe we can do that sometime soon um, but yeah like I'm just I'm just really impressed that they put this much thought into it being a an action game, I just kind of figured, you know, you beat it, maybe there's a hard mode where they just upped the numbers <laughs> and just kind of left it at that, you know? Um, so, oh, and I do kind of want to see the Ultima weapon too, so that could be something we could do. I think we didn't get like any of the art gallery, did we? I got... Excellent. I can look at a JPEG of Kate Sith. Oh, that's a, that's a more, like, drawing than a model. It's 
classic picture of Yuffie that I've seen a million times. I wonder if that was the thing I picked up in the labyrinth. Now this is probably the models. Oh, I didn't get any of them anyways. That's probably the models versus pictures. Crazy that I beat the entire game and a few extra missions and I really didn't unlock anything at all. <laughs> I shot several of those capsules throughout the game. Weird that the secret ending isn't in there, like as a question mark. All right, let's check out the, uh, the secret ending. And then we'll call it there. was uploaded 15 years ago. Holy moly. This one is newer. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, this is courtesy of Adam on YouTube. This is like the end of the ending here. waiting, Vincent Valentine. I don't know why they made me come up here and get you. <laughs> Not that I mind, though. This makes me appreciate the upscaling. Upscaling looked made this look so good. Okay, so this would be the secret ending.
It is not yet time for slumber. We still have much work to do. My brother. That was, that was a lot of work <laughs> put, put into a secret ending that I feel like no one saw. <laughs> like, that was kind of crazy high quality. Uh, so, yeah, I wonder what their idea behind that. I almost feel like that was just more of a shout out to Gact. Because, like, I don't think they ever had plans to do anything past Dirge of Cerberus in terms of the story. I mean, maybe they did that in case Dirge of Cerberus was a hit and they ended up making a sequel, but it doesn't feel like... Like, Dirge of Cerberus doesn't... Yeah, Gact is the celebrity that Genesis was based on, and Gact did music for this game. So, um, but anyways... Dirge of Cerberus doesn't come across as the type of game that I feel like they planned a sequel. Uh, especially with, like, the story and how it ends and everything. Like, just feels like it was a one and done. So I feel like that was more of a... Oh yeah, Dirge of Cerberus came out before Crisis Core, right? So... Oh, that's weird. That's really weird. That's weird that they would say, like, Genesis is back when he never left because Crisis Core didn't exist yet. <laughs> uh, I feel like it's more of like a shout out. I feel like it's more of a shout out to Crisis Core, honestly. I feel like it was a shout out to Gak and a shout out to Crisis Core. I don't think they actually had an idea of like what would happen after that. I'd have to I'd have to check, but I feel like that's that scene is potentially the last Final Fantasy VII thing in the lore, other than the scene with Red Thirteen at the end of Seven, technically because that takes place later. But that's like the last piece of Final Fantasy VII lore. After that, we have no idea what happens until hundreds of years later when Red Thirteen runs on a hill, and that's it. Well, in terms of OG Seven lore, the remake doesn't count. So it's just kind of interesting, just kind of a fun fact. Like, that's the last... That's the last thing that happens in the seven lore, which is kind of cool because kind of like we don't know what that means. It's just kind of like a, a never ending cliffhanger. So like, that's cool. Yeah, but I'm talking OG lore. Remake is different. It's a different thing. <laughs> I'm talking the, the original Final Fantasy seven compilation. That's the last thing that happens. It's kind of interesting. But. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I, I like that it's kind of a final. Cliffhanger. We never get to know what happens. And then, like I said, other than Red 13 running on a cliff. That's like the last thing in the timeline. Dirge being the last thing in the timeline is kind of a blessing and a curse like it's cool but at the same time it kind of sucks that it goes out with that because we hardly get to see the crew they kind of just appear and they're like we're here fighting and that's it vincent kind of gets the final spotlight which is cool because everyone likes vincent but just kind of a weird place to end things i guess um but yeah 
No, it is cool. I, I like that Vincent... Like, I like the general idea of Dirge. Because Yuffie and Vincent got the shorthand... Or the, the short stick. In terms of lore. Because they didn't have enough time to finish them. So they made them optional characters. Vincent gets some stuff. But more of just a... Gee, I wonder, there, there seems to be a lot going on with this Vincent guy, and, like, we don't really get to see everything. And Yuffie gets kind of nothing. She just gets her own little thing with her dad, and that's it. So it's cool that we get a game that really is specifically for Yuffie and Vincent. It's a shame that Yuffie doesn't really do anything. I expected Yuffie to be more in this game. Uh, she really just appears and helps Vincent twice, and that's it. We don't get any Yuffie backstory. We don't get any Yuffie, like, character development. She just kind of appears and helps, and that's it. Uh, gets attacked, and then Vincent helps her, and that's it. We don't, we don't get, like, any cool backstory or more, like, you know, character development with her. Probably the best moment is the opening, where she's, like, helping everyone. Like, that's kind of it. So it would have been cool to get a bit more with her. Since, you know, she's the other optional character that we didn't get much of. But at least she's like a main character in this game. More than a main, more of a main character than the others. So that's cool. But yeah, we get way more Kate Sith. Which makes sense because Reeve is there. But like, yeah. I wish we got more Yuffie. That's another thing I could say about this game. I wish we got more Yuffie stuff. Instead of like... Rant. Like, I, honestly, I would have been okay if there was no... Barrett, no Tifa, no Cloud. Like, just leave them out and just make it all about Yuffie and Vincent. Like, I would have been fine with that. And Reeve. Like, it's cool to get more Reeve as well, but... It would have been cool to focus more on Vincent and Yuffie. Even to the point where, like, I wish they had delved into their relationship a little bit. Like, I wish there would have been, like, some moments with them where they, like, talk about their friendship and maybe even, like, a scuffle... Maybe they get mad at each other and then make up or something like just just some kind of like thing, because all she really does is just appear and help. And then that's it. So. Um, yeah, would have been cool. Yeah, at least she gets her incredible remake DLC, but again, that's remake. We're talking 15 years ago. <laughs> We're talking 15 years ago when these games came out. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, final thoughts about Dirge. Again, I mean, we talked about it a lot, but overall, it, 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 it surprised me. I did enjoy it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, definitely gets repetitive. And a bit boring near the end and way too many cutscenes for an action game. And again, I'm Final Fantasy VII guy. I love to see Final Fantasy VII cutscenes. Even I was like, this is too much. Like, just, <laughs> this is too much. It, like, and not every cutscene was, like, interesting. So, like, yeah, definitely needed to cut that. But uh, you can tell, you can tell that halfway through the game, they were desperate to extend the, the playtime. They were desperate to find any, uh, you know, buffering they could so that the game didn't end in three hours. So, uh, yeah, they were they were they were trying everything <laughs> to make sure that they didn't get destroyed by its length. And I think overall it was OK for a PS2 game. It was still a bit short. Um, I think it was probably okay for a PS2 game, but then when you take into consideration that a huge chunk of it is cutscenes, I think somebody, um, somebody linked a video of all the cutscenes in this game, and it's like, an, it's like four hours. This game is four hours of cutscenes, which when the game itself is like 12 hours long, that's a bit of a yikes. And that's 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 giving it credit. Like we played through it very slow. <laughs> it's probably more eight hours. So like half the game is cutscene, which isn't the end of the world, but when it's an action game, when it's a when it's a 
you know, this type of game, that's a bit much. And especially a lot of the cutscenes just didn't have a lot of substance. Um, a lot of it was just rehashing stuff or telling us the same stuff we know or the characters just standing around talking. Not a lot of action scenes, you know. Um, the highlights were definitely the opening cutscene and then the big war cutscene with all the characters having their little moment. That was great. That was awesome. If the whole game was that, would have been amazing. But uh, obviously they blew their whole budget on that cutscene and every other cutscene is people just standing around talking. Um, even like the villain cutscenes, they're just standing around talking and then you fight in the game, so... Yeah. Uh, I wish if we could go back in time and make this more of like Devil May Cry Vincent Valentine, where a lot of the cutscenes are him jumping around doing crazy cool stuff, shooting cue balls out of the air and like, you know, just the, the typical Dante stuff. But it's Vincent. That would have been awesome. Like I, I could imagine a game where Vincent is just doing the crazy, goofy, awesome stuff. Uh, and then you have Yuffie goofing around and like it could have been there could have been a lot more that they could have done. They could have had a lot more like comedy relief with Kate Sith. Instead, they just kind of had the one um, the one area, which, by the way, that was such a talk about, uh, you know, trying to buffer the, the time of the game. Holy cow, that Kate Sith mission was a complete waste. It was like 10 minutes of just sneaking around as Kate Sith for no reason. And then we never played as Kate Sith again. So that was kind of lame. I expected another Kate Sith part later, but there never was one. Um, but yeah, like it could have been a lot more than it was, but this was just kind of a side project. So I didn't expect anything more than that. But it still impressed me, honestly. I, I still, from all the horror stories I've heard about this game... I truly think that if you're a big Final Fantasy VII fan, it is worth playing through this game once. You know, it's only going to take you eight hours. A lot of the cutscenes are really interesting. The big bombastic cutscenes that are in the game are fantastic and worth watching on a PS2 console because um, they're impressive. Playing on a PS2 console, seeing that big war movie and Cloud and stuff fighting like that was impressive for sure. So seeing that on a PS2 natively, like that was worth the price of admission right there. Um, but yeah, like I think this game is worth a playthrough if you're like a big Final Fantasy VII fan. If you're a big shooter fan, eh, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't bother. It's fun at the start when you're getting new weapons and new attachments and stuff, but after that, it's not worth it. So, um, but yeah. Yeah, I can see why so many people picked up this game as a kid and made it five minutes in and then quit. But I think that if you did and, you know, you're interested in Final Fantasy VII lore in general, it's worth going back to, especially if you already have it. I don't think it's a super expensive game to buy, but uh, if you already have it, dust it off, give it another shot. It'll probably be worth your time. Um, with that, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen... We are on to our final, final Fantathon game. Uh, I'll talk more about it next week, but, you know, three plus years in the making. And we're moving on to Final Fantasy XV. We're going to be taking it slow, probably. <laughs> um, my goal, my plan, I'll talk about this more next week, but my plan is to uh, actually do, like, 15 a bit differently i want to do the post game first not first but beat the game up to the final boss and then do the post game before doing the final boss uh, because i want the final boss to be like the finale of phantathon so uh that's the plan going in we'll see how that goes but that's my plan so and i also kind of want to make sure that i mean it's fine if it does but i'd like phantathon not to end like right as we're playing through Rebirth, but it might end up just happening that way. Um, so we'll see. I'll probably try to do just single days of 15 over the next few weeks to uh, try to elongate it a bit, but I'm not going to go, like, you know. <laughs> it's been three years. It's time to 
it's time to finish this thing, so I'm not gonna, you know, uh, subject us to 15 for too long. Um, but it's gonna be a blast, man. 15 is one of the most talked about games in our community, for better or for worse. And it's going to be really fun to hear everyone's opinions on the game, good and bad. It's a great game to talk about because the people who love it have good reasons of loving it. And the people who hate it have good reasons of hating it. So a lot of times it ends up being a very good discussion as to like what the game does well and what the game doesn't do well. Um, I've had many talks with people about 15 and a lot of times I don't disagree with a lot of the things they're saying, you know. So it's just a really fun game to talk about, a really funny game to play <laughs> for a lot of memes. So I'm excited. I am I am excited to play 15. I am excited to finish Phantathon. It's going to be a blast. For those of you that stuck with us for the entire Dirge of Cerberus playthrough, I thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope I gave you a new insight into a game that you maybe picked up but never beat. And uh, I appreciate everyone that shared their um, thoughts and experiences with this game. It's definitely an interesting insert into Final Fantasy. I'm glad it won the vote. Um, and it's a great part of history for Final Fantasy VII. So thanks so much. We will see you in the finale of Final Fantasy with Let's Play Final Fantasy XV. We'll see you there. Peace.